Me anda sozinho? of the walls of the sunken living room that we decided to start today but um, we're gonna try to do the exterior not too sure if I'm gonna if we're gonna be able to do it today not a chance basically we're gonna do the exterior form first and we're gonna make it taller than the actual walls that way we don't need to be 100% accurate and it's gonna be much faster and much easier basically we're gonna add another board of 50 centimeters and that will bring 
the form up to 80. Now we need to go up to 70. So we're gonna have 10 centimeters there to play with. So we don't need to have the form perfectly horizontal. And then on the interior, we will do the form actually at 70 all over the place and make sure that we do it dead horizontal. 70 is where the camera is standing because that's already built. And we're gonna set the laser to that height and make sure that all the forms on the interior are at the same height horizontally. And, um, but that's gonna take a few days to get to there. I don't know why I'm even saying it. As you guys know, I'm always researching for ways to improve our electrical system. The work at the building site with all the extra tools and batteries that we use every day was draining our main battery at the cabin very often, especially now during winter. A few months ago, I received this Anker Solix C1000. I showed it to you guys back then. And ever since that video has made it to the top of the list of the tools that I use every day, I decided to install it here at the tool shed of the building site where it's always plugged to the 18 volts batteries that I charge every night to the 12 volt charger that I use every day and also to charge the headphones that I use every day. I set a timer on the Anker Solix Smart App Control um, that I have here on the phone so the battery turns off after everything is charged at night. So when I come back the next day, the 18 volts batteries, the 12 volt batteries and my headphones are charged and ready to go. This is small enough as you can see that I can just place it here on this shelf and so light that I can just unplug everything and take it with me wherever I need electricity. Like when I'm using the demolition hammer drill, the vacuum or the meter saw. Those tools, I have them with cable, I don't have them with battery. So I just plug them to the C1000 and use them wherever, wherever I need without needing to have a cable uh, going to, to the location that I am. Like you will see future in the video when I'm working inside the sunken living room. As you can already tell, it is powerful enough to power all of them with 1,800 watts of power and 2,400 watts of search output via search pad. I charge it here and there when I see that the sun is out, like today, for example, it's cloudy. 
so I won't be charging it just because I will be using electricity stored in my main battery to charge this one but um, when I see that the sun is out I go ahead and charge it like here and there like maybe once or twice a week and it charges very fast like in around 58 minutes to 100% with the ultra fast charge mode when connected to the AC and then as I said I use the electricity stored in the C1000 to charge all my tools at night or to use wherever I need electricity at the building site. I'm actually waiting to receive the expansion battery that connects to the C1000 doubling its capacity for a total of 2112 watts. I might show you that in a future video. It comes with several ports, USB-C's, USB-A's and also yes, regular AC outlets. It also has an ambient light that I use at night when I'm cleaning up the storage because I don't see anything. So this comes very handy if you're looking to get a battery for your work or your adventures and what I said fits your needs then the C1000 is actually a very good option for you it's light small and powerful and very well built I have beaten up this guy for the past two months at the building site and it's very scratch buy the C1000 now for 649 US dollars I will leave a link in the description box also the C1000 expansion battery is in stock now and ready to chip which is the perfect solution for home power backup and extended journeys you can search for it on anchor.com it's been three days of work and I was able to build all the exterior forms as you can see now what I'm gonna do is to actually clean up the floor because I created a little bit of mess over there yesterday because I have to clean the edge of the concrete slab with a hammer so a lot of debris got into the slab and I just don't want to actually step on it and scratch the floor basically because um, I don't know if you guys know but this floor this concrete floor is gonna be the finished floor that one too so the whole house is going to be concrete finished polished floors that's why these floors are so important and that's why we put so much energy into making them as perfect as possible right now you can see different colors but that's basically because we had a lot of water here for a while that whitish color is the part that is more dry and eventually the whole thing it's gonna be similar to that color it's the same color on the on the foundation as you can see it's like almost white that one for example that is wet still it's very dark but that's because we didn't even let uh, the floor to dry it's been always with water for the last 25 days 28 days or so i think i'm gonna remove the sprinkler probably today or tomorrow and just let it dry but yeah we did the same here we removed the sprinkler here like 25 28 days ago because it's the only one that we have and it's now serving that concrete slab now what i'm gonna do is clean up this mess and continue with the form i need to extend the grid beam like i did there but in this other side because the foundation will extend like so so that wall is actually like a wide 40 centimeters wall that acts like a continuation of that foundation at some point that's alarm i have a chicken in the oven at some point i'm gonna cover the floor so i don't damage it before i cover it i need to actually mark the inside of the wall so i can form it
No. Ah. This piece, I cut it too tall. You can see it's sitting right there, right here. It needs to go two centimeters and a half lower. So I need to trim this guy and I already had everything done, but um, I won't film it. So next time you see this, it will be all done. All right, I'm back. Hopefully I didn't cut too much. Hey, it's getting trickier and trickier to get to these spaces. Perfect. Some of you don't understand why I keep trying to make everything like a piece of furniture in terms of like trying to make it so perfect. But this is how it is, man. If you don't try to do it, the best you can at every step then one millimeter here one millimeter there one millimeter there one millimeter there it becomes one centimeter and one centimeter becomes two and then the panels the structural panels the which by the way are going to come prefabricated once we build all the concrete we're gonna be building the walls with the steel and they come already panelized so we will receive the structural wall already prefabricated and I just want to get to that point knowing that um, every step of the way was as accurate as I could make it but that's just how I do things so these four millimeters here are not good enough so I'm gonna so I'm gonna go and fix it all right wish me luck I'm back hopefully now fits nicely I think so. Yes, vamos. All right, this is going to be the main pipe of the house. All the water is going to go in here. That's why it's such a big pipe. It's 30 what? I don't remember. 32 millimeters. I'm putting some ties to keep it in the place, but this is a temporary thing. I will do a plywood thing over here. I won't be able to remove it because it's gonna be embedded in the concrete, but unfortunately, I'd rather do that than bend this pipe too much that I pinch the corner. You know what I mean? Like, there is a moment where you, if you keep bending it, you will pinch it. And I don't have the tool to bend this pipe of this size. They're just simply springs that you put outside or inside the pipe uh, but I have them for different dimensions and for this one this is too big so I don't have I don't have the tool and um, you are as good as the tools that you have and I cannot delay the build for another week until I receive another tool so just gonna leave it like this in worst scenario if we ever need to remove this portion of pipe which I doubt it um, we will just put the pipe through the insulation that is on the outside of the house make a hole Pat it and then patch it. It's not a big deal anyway, so I think this is done. Looks solid. I will put a reinforcement here clamping both sides and there won't be a way for this wood to move. But I think this is gonna be all for today. Just this little section took me like seven hours and a half of work plus few half an hour filming and I'm very tired. The floor of the living room is dry now of water, of superficial water and it's the first time that I actually see it. And it's looking quite, quite good. Quite, quite good. Oh man, and that was a, that was an adventure to pour that floor. Hopefully next pour is gonna be a little bit easier. All right guys, this is the next day. Today uh, I'm gonna be installing all the rebar reinforcements 
for the walls because we only have the vertical ones as you can see and now we need to do a horizontal reinforcement yeah i'm gonna come one here one at roughly 30 centimeters 27 and one another 27 so it's gonna be a line of three the wall is gonna stop somewhere here but um, before i start installing the horizontal rivers i'm gonna make sure that all these guys are perfectly vertical because i can see some of them are laying back or laying to the side and i would like them to be all evenly vertical I need to place the first rebar now and before I do that I need to do some maths just because I just realized that I cannot put it where I want. I need to be very careful to not to put them where I plan to put the anchors that are going to be holding the two layers of forms. We're going to be placing clamps on each side of the form so imagine there will be another yellow form here and we're going to make holes through both forms and then put a clamp on one side and clamp on the other and then a slight a piece of eight millimeters rebar to connect both that way we can actually put a lot of pressure in it these clamps are gonna hold the forms to not to open when we pour the concrete because as you know as as we know from our experience in a previous episode when we were pouring the concrete foundation uh, the concrete is going to make especially the pump is gonna want to uh, open these forms and this wall is gonna be exposed all the walls that we're building right now are gonna be exposed exposed concrete so they're gonna be finished whatever we end up having it's going to be the walls that we're gonna have in our living room so it they need to be well done you know at least we're gonna try to do it as best as we can the thing is uh, once you remove the forms you will have a hole in the concrete probably you have seen it in high-end architectural projects or some industrial buildings that you have a, a concrete wall with holes and we design those holes to be organized and to look aesthetically pleasing it's not just holes because we need them we're taking advantage of that we need to make the holes to hold the forms to actually make the holes look good in in, in the elevation of the wall one wooden form will be here another one will be there and we will have another clamp 
like so. So we will have two clamps. And then there is um, a ratchet that, that I also bought to put tension on this guy. It moves like this and make the form really tight. So when we pour concrete, it won't be able to open because these guys are gonna be holding it. The only thing is what I said, when you finish pouring concrete and the concrete is dry, you remove one clamp from one side, another clamp from one side, and then slide the river out. And you end up with um, like a plastic cylinder inside the hole that you don't see, but you actually see the hole from the front. And um, those holes were designed to actually look good. So all this information is just to let you know that imagine the hole is here and I place the river here then I will need to lower the hole and I'll rather lower the river that we won't see than lower the hole. So I need to actually double check the plans. I'm gonna actually cut a piece of wood so I don't need to be measuring.
now I have this line. This is the one that I started with. I have that one over there that is 100% perpendicular to this guy because I did the triangulation. And now I need to draw also that one. In order to do that, I know that this line is going to be at 3 meters 60 from that line. So this point is perfect. And now I need to figure out how is this line. It's like this, it's like this, it's like this. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to do a triangulation. I am going to start by picking some random point here. 20.8, 20 centimeters point eight. And I'm just gonna double check what's the distance from here to the first line. 199.2. Two. Minus 20, 179. All right, so now I come with my app. It's not mine, but you know what I mean. It's 179.2. That will be A. That will be that side of the triangle. And then I'm going to say that I want the diagonal to be, um, I don't know, like 250 to, to have proper number, 250 centimeters. And it's going to tell me how much is the B. I don't know if you can see anything. It tells me that the B, the other side of the triangle, is 174.32 pretty much. And I put that dimension there and then I will check that the diagonal is 250. And now I go ahead and double check the diagonal. It's that simple. We are off by half a centimeter. I will push that point over there. And now with a new mark, I have 250 exactly. So I came here, put it at 270. And now since it's 250, I, this will need to say 20. That was the first line that I drew. And the real line that we need to be following is that one. So I will connect that point, this second point, to the first one I drew there. And we will have a line that is perpendicular to the first line and also parallel to the one that I drew. For this last line, I put the laser connecting one one end to the other. Makes it a little bit more easy. It's blinking now, I'm not too sure why. I think because it's locked or because it doesn't have battery. All right, I just finished putting the plastic everywhere that I want to protect, all the floor that I want to protect. Basically what you see in black is the floor that we're gonna have exposed in the end. This area is going to be like a nice fireplace, like a long fireplace. We are covering it just because we all know by now that um, the concrete pump, it's a little bit messy. Uh, since we're gonna need to pour here from there with the concrete pump. I wanted to protect the floor that we're gonna see. So any splash of concrete actually is catched by the plastic and it doesn't ruin the floor. Because again, that floor is gonna be what it is. It's the floor that the house is going to have. Also I sealed the edges, as you can see, with tape. We're gonna be sitting the form that is on this side on top of that tape, because the tape is actually aligned with the white line that I drew a few moments ago form is going to be sitting on top of the tape and the tape is taped to the floor so if any concrete goes out from from the bottom of the form it will go on top of the plastic or well, that's the idea man hopefully it works looks good like this though worst scenario we just 
painted black like this. Alright guys, I've been working behind the scenes for a couple of days just to prepare for this moment and, um, and yesterday I received finally what I was missing which is this band, I think it's called Hydrophilic Swellable Profiles What it does is, it's a, it's a profile, it's a band, like a plastic band that it, with contact of water expands so what we're gonna do, we're gonna install it all around the perimeter below the concrete wall that we're gonna pour. It will make a line all around it, closing closing this perimeter. So if water tries to go in between this concrete slab and the wall, this guy will expand and expands very, very much, making everything 100% sealed. I need to glue it to the ground so it doesn't move when I'm pouring the concrete. I need to do that before actually forming this side because I won't have access to this section once I install the inner face of the form. So it's the first time I will be doing this. It's the first time I see this material in person. I'm actually opening it right in front of you. Looks easy enough. Let's see how easy it is. I also got major new tool alert. This, I don't know how it's called, silicone gun, battery silicone gun, because we're gonna be using a lot of silicone in the future. And I had to buy a gun for this type of sausage. Rather than just going for a manual one, I went ahead and bought the power one, which should be some help, finally. Tomorrow I need to finish that line over there. I was able to do all this. Explain why we need this. Concrete is waterproof or kind of, but uh, the connection between two pieces of concrete that you pour in a different time is not. So if you have a connection between a floor and a wall that you pour at different times, which is almost always pour at different times because it's very difficult to pour a one solid piece of floor and wall at the same time just because how, how concrete works and how strong it is when, when you're pouring it. Since you are pouring it in different stages then you need to seal it if you have any issues with water. In our case this is a basement. If any water raises we will have a waterproofing membrane on the outside anyways but I'm um, just making it extra extra 
thought out and extra careful because I really don't want water in my living room. This is a solution that you will normally find at swimming pools. So when we do the swimming pool, we probably want to repeat the same procedure. It's very easy, actually. I was expecting it to be a little bit more complicated. Not complicated, but tricky. The silicone that you need to use is very thick. It makes it very easy to, to install. And also the battery power silicone gun has made this job much easier. I was looking to impress you guys. So yesterday I cut a couple of strips like this and then I left it in the water and it has swelled a little but uh, to be honest I was expecting like much more like other videos that I have watched it looked like kind of triple so I'm not too sure what's going on or, or if this is enough or not I mean I guess it's enough because imagine this is already inside the concrete locked in place with this size and then water hits it and becomes this size so this guy is gonna be extremely tight inside the hole so it's gonna make everything waterproofed but um, I was expecting it like to be you know like mind-blowing the difference like double size maybe you need to leave it for a little bit longer today I have a very slow start it's like noon but look who is here already waiting for me He's definitely protecting the material. Thank you. 